Okay, and welcome to my playthrough of Quest 64. The Grand Abbot is sort of the leader of the monastery here, and I'm just going to be quiet while he explains the lore. I've uploaded anything to y'all. <clears throat> this is quite a far cry from a uh, Deadly Premonition, but it's a fun game. Okay, um, your controls. You have the C buttons, which will bring up the spells that you have, and it'll also show you, um, it'll let you navigate through the spell menus of spells you've unlocked. You've, you unlock spells by finding elements. You can see down there those crystals at the bottom. Those bring up um, your various elements. There's fire, earth, water, and wind. We also have magic points and health points. Basic stuff. You have two interact buttons, the A button and the Z button. Um, B button is used to either adjust the camera and position it behind Brian or um, exit out of menus. You can use either of the interact buttons to uh, pick up a spirit. There we go. Um, he is right. You will need the spirits. Because the spirits are how you cast your magic. It's how you upgrade your magic. It's how you level. Let's continue on our way. Um, oh yes, inventory. You press the left bumper, uh, the right bumper to access your inventory. You can press start or the left bumper to... Um, open up your options and your status menu. But first, let's explore, because like he said, there are spirits hidden all throughout the world. There are a couple in towns, a lot of them are out in the field. Also, there are no shops in this game, absolutely no shops. There's no money in this game. Instead, all the items you find are either given to you or um, you find them in chests. Don't underestimate that staff. Um, while your magic is certainly the flashiest stuff you have and the most damaging, the staff does have its uses. When you're out of magic points and you can't cast magic, it's your only means of offense. Offense. Furthermore, um, whenever you hit an enemy with it, you will gain a point of magic back. So, so in this way, you can sort of build up your... Uh, magic points. Say you're somewhere dangerous and you're very low on magic, don't have any magic healing items, you can just grind on some monsters for a bit, just knocking them. But for the most part, at least that I can remember, and at this point in the game, because I'm doing this in post-commentary, um, your magic points regenerate fairly quickly over time. It's not it's not super fast, like it doesn't automatically regenerate. But it is enough to where I have not need to use any um, items. Of course, then again, I only have 15 mana points right now. So You'll notice that I sort of use the interact, interact button near the door, but that's not quite how you open it. Um, instead, you have to sort of run and press toward the door about where the knob will be whichever way it opens in. So let's talk a little bit about the story. Your father, 
the monastery here protected a great book called the Eltel Book. Before then, everything was chaos. And your father is apparently like a court mage or something because he's defended the whole town. He leaves to go and find the Eltel Book. And he's been missing, so that's why Brian's heading out. We just got our first item of the game, so let me take a break and show you some things. This is how our... this is our status screen. We can see the map, we can see our status, our stats, and all this other sort of fun stuff. But right now, we want to look at our inventory. Like I said, our inventory is going to be our right bumper. Not that one. Our right trigger. Just wait for me to get it. I'll, I'll get there eventually. There we go. Um, fresh bread. HP, 50 recovery. So basically right now, it's our full heal, and we are going to need that. Maybe. Anyways... Fresh bread is pretty easy to come by. A lot of inns will give it to you. A lot of shops will give it to you just for free. Move, please. The other way we get items is by chests. Get that nice little animation and honey bread obtained. That little sound means you've got an item. Let's check out that honey bread. 100 recovery, so it's better than our fresh bread. So that cheapskate was just going to let us off, you know, with the inferior bread. That's Marmaduke. Uh, a lot of these names are not important to remember because you will never see them again. You can go... It's... It's sort of a linear game. Anyways, to the right we head down to Mel Road, and to the left we will head to the stables, which only has one thing, but it's an important thing. Like I said, you want to explore every, every bit you can, because by exploration we can find spirits. I wish you could take that horse, but you can't. Instead, see those little bubbles coming out of the haystack? If you press the interact button, this little menu comes up, and you can choose an element. Um, as you grow over time, you will find a lot of elements. You can also gain elements by grinding on monsters. Um, but you can also find a lot of them. Uh, think of them kind of as magics from FF8. A uh, similar concept to that. Anyways, we have to choose our first element. So let's go ahead and... I am going to go ahead and go with the water. Water, I would recommend going with because it's the easiest element from what I'm remembering and from what I've read. Um, this is because the water element has our where our healing spells are. We, every couple of elements, we gain a new spell. You can see we didn't gain one for just one more water element. But over time, by increasing your various elements, not only will your spells um, in that area increase, but your, um, like the damage they do, or their effectiveness, you'll also gain access to new spells. So, so it's, it's really, it really behooves you to sort of focus on one area in particular, at least at first. Um, and to that end, I've chosen water because I want to get that heal spell in. Um, the other elements. Fire, from what I've seen and from what I remember, is not a good element. At least not at first. It's hard to start off with. Whereas water is kind of easy mode. Um, but for this, I'm going to be doing water as my primary element... And Earth is my secondary. And maybe some wind and then eventually fire. Here, here's the thing though. Um, there are plenty of spirits in the game. So 
you should be able to fairly easily max, um, uh, at least three, if not all of your elements by the end of the game. Because each element only has, uh, you can only get 50 spirits for each element. One thing I really like about video game graphics is the sky. I, I can't help it, I'm a sucker for the sky. I, I'm just, even in real life, I'm a sucker for it. Not sure what else I was expecting there. You also want to talk to everyone. Um, he's going over battles, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, because sometimes they'll give you items. Like Pot did. Or you can just run at their house and steal some items. Like Fresh Bread. Healing items. There we go. Um, we have a limited amount of space, space, and items do not stack. So you want to be sort of you, you don't you don't want to be too stingy on your healing items. Another thing, there's this big, um, there's this big, uh, deal made about how it's dangerous after dark, but really, I've, I don't notice a difference between, in monster attacks from day or night. So, yeah, so like I was saying, dear old Lord Bartholomew, our dad was apparently a bit of a hero. I'm not sure how old Brian is supposed to be, because he's obviously older than a lot of the kids you see. But he's not quite the size of an adult yet either. So. Uh, like I was saying, dark and night. Um, there is a day-night cycle. It slowly progresses during the day, or you can stay in an inn to advance it. Here's something I want to point out. This guy looks like, you know, like he should be in a good mood because the Eltail book isn't broken yet. But look at him, he looks pissed off. Over there we have a shop, and right next to it is the inn. Little old lady. First, let's go and visit the shop. Shops, if you have, if, the, if there's no money, what are what are shops for? That's probably what you're asking. Well, they give you white wings. Um, well, not white wings. They give you wings, or sometimes they'll give you bread or other items. You heard that sound. Um, wings are your instant teleport. What he, what he means by they only work in open areas is they only work on the field. Like, they won't work here in town or anything like that. Or in the forest. They won't work in dungeons or caves or forests. Just the world screen. Next up. Sorry, just checking around to see if there's anything back there. Let's head into the inn. First, let's meet our recurring NPC friend. That there is Shannon. We're going to be seeing her a lot from now on. She's going to be in pretty much every inn we see. Here's the thing, though. When I was a kid, I thought Shannon was a guy. But I just noticed recently, you know, that she has, like, you know, female parts. And she also 
know now that Shanna is a girl's name, so... We already know about the spirit, so there's no reason to worry about that. Just re-emphasizing the fact that it's important to explore. Nothing? Nope, nothing here. Okay, let's head back downstairs and save. Well, f first let's uh, explore the. T no, I think I will save. Won't hurt anything. This will bring us to the save screen. Continue save means that you're going to keep saving, not that you will finish saving. So, go ahead and save, and then choose no save when you're done. No continue save, I mean. And there's night time. And look, those kids are still out playing. They're pretty safe in here. There's no monsters just wandering around Melrose. Uh. Wear hairs. Um, they. That that brings up something. Every monster sort of has an element to it. Wear hairs are one of the first enemies we find. And they specialize in wind. So they use things like wind cutter. Well, I'll, I'll display all of the um, basic spells eventually. First, let's go ahead, before we head out of the monastery, let's go ahead and comb these areas that we didn't finish to make sure we didn't miss any spirits. Spirits, I, I can't emphasize enough how important they are. And it looks like there are no spirits here, so without further ado, let's begin our adventure in earnest. I'm going to kind of um, screw up on this first fight, just so you can see how it goes. You have two octagons. You can kind of dodge by running. You can use your C buttons to pull up a spell, but they have limited range sometimes. Like Water Pillar, which is our primary spell, has... it's pretty much just melee. You can also use the staff, and as you can see there, It, it brought up our HP, well, MP. We have this limited area we can have fight in, and then we have this larger octagon, which is the entire field. This game really is not forgiving if you're just um, screwing around. But I'm not going to use the recovery quite yet. I wanted to just show you why it's important to... It's important not to be stingy on your magic. That's Fireball. It has a f slightly longer range than uh, Pillar. Than our Water Pillar. Which still can't hit, by the way. See how helpful that water pillar was? And for killing them with magic, we get some more spirits. So let's go ahead and put that into water again. And hopefully soon we will have the heal spell. I'm pretty beat up right now, so... 
Um, we're gonna want to be a little careful from that here on in. Wear hairs are pretty easy, but they normally come in groups. For some reason, they're only coming in ones right now. There's Wind Cutter. We missed with it completely. Looks like we're in need of time for a heal. We'll wait just a little longer. Um, it's a good idea to sort of stick near the edges, not just on the road, because the spirits are really randomly anywhere. There we go. Wind Cutter really does little damage. Brian's breathing, breathe, or no, breathing a little hard right now. Here's Rock, which is a good spell. You know, it's our only real distance spell. So let's go ahead and use this for a little bit and kill this guy. There we go. Rock. And it missed. Wonderful. Pressing A will just randomly bring you to the next part. And as you can see, I'm frozen, so I can't move right now. Now I'm getting my ass handed to me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my breads. I'm able to run again. Now, monsters do have magical resistances, depending on what sort of magical creature they are. Like, this guy is a water type, so when I use water, it's not very effective. So, let's just hit him the old-fashioned way. works decently, but doesn't work as good as our staff. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, battle. Let's put our new tricks to the test. Let's be a little... Let's fight these guys a little more intelligently. Remember, these guys pretty much wrecked us last time. Still out of range. By fighting intelligently, we have one shot at this fire type. What do you know? That was an easy battle. Let's go ahead and keep pumping our water. And we've gained access to water pillar level 2. That's pretty neat. We're gonna I'm gonna show that off next battle. Or soon, at least. Um, but we still have plenty more to unlock, so... That's how we navigate. Just keep pressing, and, um, the other little letters, as far as I can tell, the other elements, I mean, don't have any bearing on how powerful a spell under that school is. Like, healing spells are, um, you, you have to push water and then uh, earth. However, having more earth doesn't make heal more powerful. Let's try out that water pillar. That is really nice. Now, over here along this beach, we will find Ooh, a big rat, a uh, big mouth. Let's use this as an example of how to escape from battle. Big mouths have a lot of health. However, they are 
water types, which means they have to get kind of close to you to do anything. So if you keep your distance and just kind of whack at them from a distance, you should have no problem. It's important to realize where you where you are in relation to the enemy. And we're almost able to escape now. There we go. Once you have your octagon outside of the yellow octagon, you are able to escape. Of course, that doesn't stop enemies from instantly coming back to you. So let's go ahead and throw down with this guy, since he's apparently aching for an ass kicking. Yeah, wind cutter is really not working for us. Okay, um, aiming spells. You kind of have to be careful where you are, because he will cast. Brian will cast directly in the area where he is. Pointing. I don't want to escape, I want to kill this guy. And sometimes you just have to take hits. Fortunately, his water pillar is not too dangerous to us. And after a few whackings, he's gone as well. There's what we were looking for. Oh! Seems someone wants to screw. Seems someone wants to throw down before we kill them, huh? Let's go ahead and water pillar this guy. Just a basic water pillar. Even though you do gain more powerful spells, sometimes a smaller spell will do the. Oh, this is cool. We get to double down on our water skill. Very, very nice. Still haven't unlocked our third water spell yet, though. But that's okay. We have some guys who are willing to be... Uh, I don't really feel good about fighting three of them, though. Not yet, at least. Perhaps after I get the heal spell. The way battles go... Is... It's pretty much always... The monster takes a turn, then you take a turn, and then his buddy, if he has any, takes a turn. It goes like that, so you have more turns than anyone else. There's a house over there in the distance, so let's go ahead and check that out. We're gonna do what I like to call the one-two punch. You can kind of AoE if you place things right. However, I'll show that later. Still a little far. Hellhounds are kind of our, um... Yeah, they're not... They're basic... They're our basic, um slaves right now. We can beat them to a bloody pulp without, with pretty much no difficulty. And that's the beauty of having water as your starting element. Let's head into this building real quick and see what's up. And there's a spirit here. Very nice. And there we go. We have our first healing spell. Healing level 1. Looks like 1 MP for 4 HP. Not a bad trade-off. 
with de some dedication, we can keep healing ourselves. And as we gain more water, we will upgrade how much that heals us. So it's a pretty good thing. Anyways, with that, I think I'm going to cut this video here. Um, thank you very much for watching. And next time we will continue on to Donderon. Thank you and have a good day.